a bunch of paintings. Look, I might get into trouble for this, either from you or from my own family, but hey. I'm just saying what the internet says. We're talking about aliens here, so let's dabble in some speculation, shall we? Art imitates life, or so the saying goes, which is why some believe, based on depictions of Christ, that he was visited by aliens, or even maybe was one, I don't know. There, I said it. The examples I'm going to talk about are the baptism of Christ painted in the 1700s and the Madonna and Saint Giovannino. The baptism of Christ by Ert de Gelder literally shows the image of a flying saucer sending beams or lasers of light shining down on baby Jesus. Doesn't look like a sun if you ask me. Then the painting of the Madonna I mentioned, painted by Domenico Gerlandio 200 years earlier, literally has a flying saucer in the background. There's even a shepherd taking a minute off in the corner, just like, ooh, what's that? What is it supposed to mean? And why does this image keep turning up? Because it's gonna keep showing up in the other ones we mentioned, so let's keep going. Number nine, the spaceship panel in SETI. This is one of the weirdest series of hieroglyphic panels ever discovered. In the temple of SETI in Abydos, Egypt, there is a panel that depicts images that look all too familiar. While some of them are a little more ambiguous, the image of a helicopter and what looked like cars the Jetsons would have driven really stand out. This caused a lot of pseudo archeologists to freak out because they finally had proof that the ancient Egyptians had encountered advanced technology. But more legit, archaeologists continue to debunk this theory by saying that the drawings were actually a result of edited carvings. The translation even means, he who protects Egypt and overthrows the foreign countries. I think the jury is still out on this one to be honest. What do you guys think? Number 8, the Vatican's secret archives. I, okay, I could have picked one or two, but all of it, just all of it, we just don't know what's in there. I'm putting the Vatican secret archives on this list because there is for sure evidence in that library that asks a lot of questions or maybe even answers some. You can actually get access to them, it just takes, I don't know, the 12 trials of Hercules to get approved. Then you have to fly to Rome and go through each page by hand. There are thousands of historical documents with secrets the Vatican kept hidden from prying eyes. For example, in the 17th century, Pope Paul V ordered a select collection of documents to be sealed from the public until 1881. Researchers believe that there are documents so explosive that they threaten the doctrine of the Catholic Church. They may even contain information on messages that Giordano Bruno, we will get to him in a minute, received from extraterrestrials. The Vatican archives also contain secrets pertaining to the Fatima mystery, which brings us to the Fatima mystery. In 1917, three children apparently saw an apparition of the Virgin Mary in a field. Their vision prompted 70,000 people to visit the same sheep pasture and stated that they saw a spinning silver disc in the sky. The children apparently received a message from the specter that said, we are here, we have been since thousands of years ago, and that they will return again. This entire story went to the Vatican, but apparently they censored the messages. The children received three messages, but the Pope refused to release the third and final one, which apparently mentions the existence of extraterrestrial life. Why would they censor such a message? Can one believe in both the existence of a higher being and alien life? Apparently the Vatican doesn't think so, though we will never know until the day we finally get a hand on those documents. Giordano Bruno. Giordano Bruno was a bit of an enigma. His radical ideas and futuristic thinking have many people today wondering if he's actually a time traveler or an alien. We don't know. Bruno was born in 1548 and lived until the year 1600 and was considered one of the most adventurous thinkers of the Renaissance. I know that's not ancient, but it's old, okay? So there. I just, it's, I can't help but talk about it, so thank you for indulging me. Stemming from Copernicus's heliocentric theory, Bruno believed in the new philosophy. It disproved Aristotelian natural philosophy and supported the idea that the universe was infinite animate and had loads of solar systems like our own. What's even weirder is that Bruno even foretold theories like the many worlds hypothesis hundreds of years before quantum mechanics was even considered a thing. He even theorized about atoms and molecules. Needless to say, his radical ideas weren't welcomed by the church, especially since most of his theories were correct. Like they are, a lot of them are. No wonder people think he's a time traveler. How on earth did these ideas even get into his head? Number five, 
rock paintings in India. Archaeologists were stunned when they came across ancient rock carvings dating over 10,000 years old in a cave in Raipur. What made their jaws drop to the floor? The stark possibility that these drawings depict the visitation of ancient aliens and UFOs. NASA and the ISRO, aka the Indian Space Research Center, are trying to learn more about their origins of course. Due diligence is key when it comes to claims like these. But upon first glance, these beings look as though they are humanoid creatures wearing spacesuits. Beliefs in the surrounding village vary, but many people believe that they are a depiction of the Rohela people. The Rohela people, or the small sized ones, were people who allegedly used to land from the sky in round shaped flying objects and steal two people from the village and they'd never return. Number four, the Antikythera Mechanism. The Antikythera Mechanism is one of the most mysterious ancient discoveries of all time. Found 150 feet below the surface of the Aegean Sea, divers discovered a shipwreck. During the excavation, scientists discovered one of the oldest recorded computers dating back to 7th century BC. It was determined to be a kind of analog computer used to predict astronomical events. According to author David Childress, for scientists, this finding was equivalent to finding a jet plane in King Tut's tomb. It changed how they perceived ancient history. Due to its stark complexity, alien enthusiasts believe that this technology must have been passed down from superior beings. So, aliens. The device was replicated in order to unravel the mystery, and even more shockingly, the device could calculate the position and running time of each planet. How could a pre epoch civilization be able to create such a device without the use of sophisticated astronomical tools? You're thinking it, I'm just saying it. Aliens. Ba bam. Before we uncover our top three, remember if you like this video, do us a favor, smash that like button, punch it, poke it, boop it, whatever you want to do, and subscribe to stay up to date. It really helps us out and we love you for it. Now for our top three. The moving statues of Rhodes. So this actually relates to the one I just talked about. So this is cool, I'm getting two points in one. This relates actually to the Antikythera mechanisms as researchers believe that the ship it was found on originates from Rhodes. Move over Atlantis. According to some, the island of Rhodes contains some of the most advanced technology of the time. Apparently the statues would suddenly just come to life, which implies that they developed some kind of machinery over 2,000 years ago, around 1,500 years too soon for any kind of robotics. Legend says that the people earned the technology from the gods, though what they could have considered gods may have been something extraterrestrial in nature. Number two, an iron dagger. When archaeologists began excavating King Tut's tomb, it was not surprising to find many elaborate and delicate objects, but one artifact stands out from the rest, an iron dagger, delicately laid in gold with a beautiful golden sheath. Iron is a very commonplace material today, in fact, not a day goes by where we don't come in contact with it at some point. But at the time this dagger was made, the ancient Egyptians were 200 years away from the Iron Age. Iron was incredibly rare. Then they discovered ancient hieroglyphs alluding to the dagger being given to them from the heavens. Now you see where I'm going with this. The composition of the dagger was tested and they found iron, but also included nickel and cobalt in exactly the combination that is found in meteorites. The riddle now makes sense as the iron came from space, but where did it land? Archaeologists continue to theorize its location, though the jury is still out. So how else could they have gotten it? And and last but not least, geoglyphs. Geoglyphs are massive versions of petroglyphs, which are small drawings carved into the earth and rock. They appear all over the world in every culture. The most famous example of geoglyphs are the Nazca lines in Peru, which we've talked about on this channel before. If you find the video, post it down below to help each other out. The Nazca lines are the most popular due to the sheer size of them and variety, and many believe they hint at alien life. One of them is literally called the astronaut because that's exactly what it looks like. But to give you some more for examples, there is the massive Uffington White Horse found in Britain dating back to 11,000 BC, the works of the old men discovered in Jordan in the 1900s. I could go on, they're everywhere. Maybe we should do a video. <laughs> Let me know if you want to. In most cases, the lines are so precise and clear that many wonder how these ancient civilizations constructed these designs when we only discovered their existence when we learned how to fly. Or Flying airplanes, that is. One answer seems to make the most sense. They needed somebody above, being like, move there, carve there, that one needs a little more. 
aliens. Duh. <laughs> the biggest question I have stemming from this list revolves around the images that keep turning up all throughout history. Why flying saucers? Where did that image come from if not from spaceships in the sky? Why when we see pre epoch drawings on caves or devices beyond our understanding, does something inside us suspect it came from somewhere else? I believe aliens exist, but even I'll admit that the jury is still out on whether they've been here all this time. But still. Who knows? No harm in asking questions, right? Number 10, the pyramids. Here is the thing about ancient things we don't understand. They didn't have tractors or power tools. How on earth did they build these things? The belief that aliens helped build the pyramids has been a conspiracy theory since before the dawn of the internet. So let's dive in, shall we? The pyramids at Giza in Egypt were built around 4,500 years ago to serve as the resting place for great pharaohs and queens. And they are massive. The Great Pyramid is made of millions of precisely carved stones about two tons each, not pounds, tons. One ton is about 2,000 pounds, so yeah. Even with today's equipment, it would be a massive challenge. There's also the factor of their precise alignment with Orion's belt that has alien theorists super excited. Another factor that has conspiracies buzzing is that these pyramids are somehow in better shape than the ones built after them. Scientists still don't quite know how they were built, so that's where aliens come in. Due to their complexity and size, aliens or some outer celestial force could be an explanation. But the leading theory is that they were built through the use of many and many and many hands. But even still, something doesn't click there. I think humans were a lot smarter than we often give them credit for, so I'm gonna admit I'm skeptical of the aliens theory, but I'm open to it. And I'm definitely open to all the others on this list. Number nine, Stonehenge. So for similar reasons to the massive building blocks of the pyramids, there are a lot of questions surrounding Stonehenge. And we have to talk about them. Just outside of Salisbury, England, there is a massive circle of 92 stones. We know it was built around four to 5,000 years ago, same time as the pyramids. And the weight of each stone varies from four tons to 50 tons. In July, 2020, scientists found evidence that the Sarsen stones trace back to westward Wiltshire around 25, 25 kilometers north of the site. Individually, they weigh around 50,000 pounds. So imagine that. On top of that, scientists have no idea who built it or why. One of the most popular theories is that it was built by the Druids. Stonehenge also aligns with solstice and eclipses, which means whoever built it had their eyes carefully on the sky, probably in relationship to their pagan beliefs. But even still, how? Researchers have some theories that may suggest that they had the technology to accomplish this feat around that time. Or did they? There are too many questions still unanswered for me to be completely sold that it didn't involve aliens. Number eight, Teotihuacan. Keeping with the theme of ancient, potentially alien structures, we have Teotihuacan, AKA the city of the gods in Mexico. Though scientists have confirmed that it was built by human hands, many alien enthusiasts still think the jury is still out. Constructed over 2,000 years ago, Teotihuacan age, size, and complexity seems out of this world. The city could house over 100,000 people, and scientists believe that the structure was built through a combined effort of the Maya, Zapotec, and Mistec people. But something really weird happened on May 4th, 2015. A tourist took a picture of the structure, not thinking anything of it at the time. But when he finally looked down at it, he noticed two floating discs above the structure. That, along with the sheer colossal size of the structures, fed the alien conversation. On top of that, as of 2018, scientists have only excavated around 10% of the site. It could be a little over that now, but there are plenty of secrets yet to be revealed, including if those two ships were attempting to return to a lost civilization they helped build. Number seven, the green children. The story of the two children who appeared in the village of Woolpit, Suffolk, England, has become what some would call lore, but that doesn't mean to say it didn't stem from something very, very real. In the 12th century, two children with vibrant green skin and weird clothes showed up in the village confused and alone. They spoke a language no one understood, but despite that, the village took them in. Initially, the two refused any and all food offered to them until they took a liking to raw beans. The more they ate and the longer they stayed, the more the green color began to fade. The two children eventually learned to speak English too, just enough to explain where they were from. They spoke of a place where it was perpetually twilight and had been helping their dad with the cattle when a loud bang sounded and they turned up in Woolpit and there they stayed. The young boy died sadly after, but the little girl ended up growing old in Woolpit, even marrying. Some think they were from a parallel universe, others believe alien teleportation, but follow the paintings and many depictions of them to see if you can decide for yourself. Number six, Val Camonica, Italy cave drawings. So we talked about petroglyphs last time and if you don't know, stop this video now and check out part one because I talk about it there. Go check out part one. 
pause. You back? Okay, good. For those of you who are like, nah, petroglyphs are tiny little cave drawings depicting everyday life of the ancients, usually carved into bronze or cave walls showing people hunting, gathering, and communing with aliens, you know, that kind of stuff. The Valcamonica cave drawings in Italy fueled a lot of alien hype when they were discovered. Carved some eight to 10,000 years ago before the Bronze Age, the glyphs appear to show men with helmets on their heads and oddly shaped weapons. They even have little lines shooting out from their helmets as if they glowed. Alien hunters around the world considered this as indisputable proof that aliens visited our ancient relatives, so who knows. Number five, 250,000 year old aluminum. A couple days ago on date night, we ordered in and the packaging all came wrapped in aluminum. We use it every day. It's one of the most common materials found on earth, making up approximately 8.2% of the earth's crust. So we find it a lot. But did you know, we only figured out how to extract it in the 1800s. So what the heck was a five pound aluminum object doing buried next to 10,000 year old mastodon bones in Romania? Answer aliens. No one knew at all around that time what aluminum was or how to extract it, yet aluminum made up 89% of the metal wedge they found. The object was clearly crafted by someone, and many have theorized that it could have been anything from a tool to the landing foot of an alien spaceship. No one knows the answer, so that just leaves one option. Okay, maybe a few, but one guess onto which one is my favorite. Number four, the Karnak stones. This is like Stonehenge, but three times the size, quite literally. On the northwest coast of France in Karnak, 3,000 megalithic granite stones weighing anywhere from 50 to 100 tons are placed in rows over two miles long. They were carved from local rock formations and erected 4,500 to 2,500 BC at the end of the Stone Age. It is absolutely mind boggling and archeologists are baffled. Legends say giants built Karnak, but the leading alien theory is that they were built in order to communicate with beings in the sky. What do you think that means? Mainstream archaeologists speculate that they are actually two markers, but ancient astronaut theorists began to notice that they are actually laid out in exact geometric positions. The angles are all the same and they follow the Pythagorean theorem. What and who were they trying to communicate with and why? All right, before we hit our top three, if you like this video and you're sticking with it and want a part three, you know what to do. Like this video, subscribe for more, and comment comment on what you want to see next. Number three, the Alfbert swords. Okay, instead of the lady in the lake, what if Excalibur was actually given to us by aliens? And by Excalibur, I mean like the closest thing, which were the Alfbert swords. So you pretty much had to carry a sword with you at all times in medieval times because you just never knew. I was around the corner. Thieves, hooligans, who knows? But they were actually pretty expensive. A run on the mill one would cost anywhere between 1200 to 24 grand in today's prices. But Alfbert swords were priceless and the technology it took to make them shouldn't have existed. So how were they made? The Alfbert swords are a collection of Viking swords dated between 800 to 1000 AD. They were the strongest, sharpest, and most flexible swords ever made, but the technology used to make them couldn't be replicated until the 18-1900s. The process for combining the materials used to make the swords required an oven set at 1600 degrees Celsius, which was not only hot enough to melt the materials, but also draw any impurities. Then other metals could be added. Production of these swords appears to have ceased within 200 years of their inception, but no other name besides Ulfbert lends a clue as to who made them. So how did they get the technology and was it actually made by a human are the two questions that surround these swords. We'll leave it up to, I don't know, the future to decide. I guess we'll never know, who knows. Number one, Sirpur, India, the Sarang Tila Temple. This structure dates back to the 17th century AD, but was buried by an earthquake in 11th century AD, but somehow it survived. Blocks were held together by Ayurvedic paste, which was one of the main reasons reasons it survived, along with three hollow shafts beneath the structure designed to dissipate an earthquake. The recipe for the paste is 4,500 years old and is from an ancient Indian text called the Maya Mamantan, an architectural manuscript passed down from the king of the demigods, Mayasura, who oversaw various construction projects, including cities in the sky. There are many points in the temple that imply that the knowledge came from somewhere else. Even the head archeologist, Dr. Arun Sharma, believes that aliens visited and gave the townspeople the technology. In your opinion, where did this knowledge come from? Those who are more advanced in other planets uh -huh. used to visit the Earth. And I think they must have 
given some knowledge to the local people. So there you are. Evidence from the head archaeologist himself, so I guess it's up to us. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have meteorite ALH84001. In 1984, there was the discovery of a meteorite that had landed in Antarctica. This meteorite was a piece of Martian rock that had been blasted off of the surface of the red planet after some sort of collision, and it wandered the solar system for a cool 15 million years before it came hurtling down to Earth to be discovered by scientists. This is already pretty cool, but what's cooler is that in 1996, NASA scientists announced that they had found what appeared to be fossilized microbes in the rock. Analysis of the rock showed that it contained organic molecules and tiny specks of mineral magnetite, which can sometimes be found in the bacteria here on Earth. It was also said that underneath an electron microscope, the scientists found signs of nanobacteria. This piece of evidence has been quite controversial, with some scientists bringing up alternative to these key pieces of evidence. Some experts have argued that the magnetite wasn't actually similar to those found in Earth bacteria, and that the organic molecules were just contaminants from Earth, which is a fair argument. At the end of the day, we aren't exactly sure if this is proof or not, but the good news is that the Perseverance rover on Mars might finally be able to give us the answers to these questions. In our number 9 spot today, we have Dr. Richard Hoover. For around two decades, Dr. Richard Hoover has been studying meteorites that were found in Antarctica, and in 2011, he claimed that he and his team had found evidence of ancient bacteria from colonies that thrived on comets, moons, and other planets. The astrobiologist said that they were able to make this discovery through the use of the most advanced microscanning technology in the entire world. Dr. Hoover sliced open these meteorites and discovered what they called remains of cyanobacteria, also known as blue-green algae. This type of algae is said to have a unique quality and the ability to thrive even in some of the most harshest conditions, which is necessary when talking about surviving the extreme environment some other planets hold, as well as just space in general. Dr. Hoover said that while some of the bacteria he had found was similar to those on Earth, he said that some of the others were completely alien. He said, quote, Neither I nor other experts who have seen the evidence have any idea what these creatures might be. I do believe these findings indicate that life is not restricted to Earth, but is broadly distributed, even outside our solar system." End quote. In our number 8 spot today, we have a fossil graveyard. In July of this year, in the Cotswold region of the UK beneath a limestone quarry, researchers made a fascinating discovery. Paleontologists uncovered a huge fossil graveyard of squiggly, alien-like Jurassic-era creatures. Like, what? These fossils included tens of thousands of these marine invertebrates, and they were all preserved at different stages in their life cycle. Talk about a scientific jackpot. It appeared as though these creatures lived at a time when they were absolutely thriving, until something happened. It isn't clear exactly what this event was, but perhaps it was some sort of mudslide that was triggered by an earthquake, but either way, it ended up suffocating and entombing all of these creatures for 167 million years until they could be found by these paleontologists. I know these were clearly Earth creatures and not actually aliens, but these distant relatives of the creatures that currently exist on Earth truly do seem like aliens to us now. In our number 7 spot today, we have a fossil monster. These fossils pertaining to one particular creature have only been found in one spot, and that is in the Maison Creek fossil beds of Illinois. Here they have found the fossils of an animal called Tulamonstrum gregarium, or simply the Tully monster. This animal is said to have lived 300 hundred million years ago in the shallow waters that covered Illinois. What is so unique about these fossils from this creature, other than the fact that it lived 300 million years ago, which is wild, is that attempts at classifying this creature have been highly controversial. Interpretations of this fossil have been likened to mollusks, arthropods, conodonts, worms, and vertebrates. It is super weird that this creature with fossils located in only one place from 300 million years ago is super hard to classify because it has a bunch of different tributes that could be placed in a number of different animal classes. I'm not saying it's an alien. I'm just saying it's a little mysterious. In our number 6 spot today, we have Curiosity. NASA's Curiosity rover is one of the rovers sent to Mars to explore the red planet we want to know so much about. Curiosity has taken photos that have been extremely helpful to the scientists here on Earth, but some of those photos are more intriguing than others when it comes to the search for alien life. One batch of these photos, when looked at by researcher Barry de Gregorio, piqued his interest. He explained that the objects in the photos looked extremely similar to the Ordovician trace fossils he had studied and 
photographed here on Earth. He went on to ask the question, if not trace fossils, what other geological explanations could NASA come up with? These stick-like features he is talking about were first spotted in black and white photos taken by Curiosity, and they were so interesting that they sent the rover back to take a second look. What do you guys think? Do you think we'll one day find life on Mars, or do you think it is hiding somewhere else in the universe? Let me know down below in the comments. Maybe we'll be the one to find aliens. In our number 5 spot today we have the Gale Crater. The Gale Crater on Mars has been the focus of study for a long time as it is believed that this crater once held water. Many scientists have speculated that this may be a location that did and possibly still could hold a watery environment conducive to life. Over 3,000 photographs taken by NASA's Curiosity rover were examined by a team of 14 experts in astrobiology, astrophysics, biophysics, geobiology, microbiology, algae, fungi, and fossils. This team published a controversial report which stated that they had found proof of life on Mars in these photos. Dr. Rudolf Schlid, who is said to be a Harvard Smithsonian astrophysicist, wrote, quote, We discovered Martian formations resembling metazoan fossils and observed hundreds of specimens which closely resemble algae and dimpled lichens attached to mudstones, end quote. The report that this team published has been controversial because of the fact that it was determined from photos rather than actual samples here on Earth, but at the end of the day, any kind of sign and any kind of possibility is rather exciting. Like I mentioned in the first one, hopefully the Perseverance rover will be able to head over to the Gale Crater and get a closer look at what is going on down there. Maybe we're closer to finding solid proof of alien life than we once thought. In our number 4 spot today we have these Canadian fossils. In Kootenay National Park in Canada in 2018, paleontologists discovered something incredible. This discovery was of course a fossil, and it was carapaces that had been molted onto a long gone ocean floor that once existed here on Earth. These carapaces belong to some sort of species that is entirely new to science. You see where I'm going with this? It is thought that these fossils came from the Cambrian period 540 million years ago. While it is unlikely these creatures were actually aliens, it seems almost alien that these completely unknown creatures once existed on our planet. And who knows, maybe it really is the fossil of an alien. I mean, I wasn't around 540 million years ago to tell you, so at this point, I'm not really sure. It is debated exactly how these creatures relate to animals we currently have living on this wonderful earth, which just adds to the mystery of this wonderful find. In our number 3 spot today we have lava tubes. As it turns out, lava tubes may just be where the alien life has been hiding all these years. Besides holding the keys to the answers of a planet's geological history, lava tubes may also host environmental conditions that are relatively stable, which is kind of shocking. This may mean that these lava tubes would be appealing to life forms of all sizes. If a planet like, let's say, Mars ever did host life at one point, it's entirely possible that these life forms may have moved and tried to find a safer place amongst the changing conditions and evolution of Mars. These life forms may have been seeking some kind of haven, and this is where the lava tubes come in. Pascal Lee, a planetary researcher at NASA's Ames Research Center in Mountain View, California, said, quote, On Mars and other places, lava tubes have the potential to have made the difference between life and death, end quote. Lava tubes, wherever they are found, are scientifically exotic, and it's been said that a mission to another world that also studies these underground features as well as the surface of the planet is like getting two planets for the price of one. Maybe our issue all along is that we've been searching on the planet when we really should be looking at what's going on inside. In our number 2 spot today we have the Sri Lanka fossils. In 2012, scientists from the United Kingdom explained that they had found algae-like fossils inside of meteorite fragments that landed in Sri Lanka. Not only could this potentially have been proof of the existence of alien life, but it also could give indications as to how life on this planet formed, as that truly is one of the mysteries we still don't really have answers to. There are a few theories as to how life began, and they include the theory that life spontaneously erupted from inorganic molecules somehow, that life came here on a comet or an asteroid, or that some sort of alien civilization directly sent an asteroid here that contained life. Although this last one is the least likely, it's the one I'm most hoping for. 
Anyway, this fossil discovery may be holding the keys to this mystery we've long awaited the answers to. In our number one spot today, we have the Australia fossils. 3.5 billion years ago, Earth wasn't exactly a great place to live. That is no shade to the beautiful planet we call home, it was just a different time. There were a lot of volcanic eruptions, not a lot of oxygen, and a pretty high chance of getting hit by an asteroid. Despite all of this and this extreme environment, something happened that allowed life to form and evolve here. This has led scientists to believe that surely this has also happened on other planets. Right? Fossils found in Australia, which were dated back three and a half billion years ago, are the earliest direct evidence of life on Earth. This alone is crazy and exciting, but the research done on these fossils showed that not all of these fossilized organisms were the same. Some were primitive photosynthesizers, and others produced methane. This shows that not only was life forming at this time, but that it had an easy time doing so. Scientists can't be sure about how much earlier life could have been formed here, but if the conditions are right, it seems as though these fossils prove that it's not exactly difficult for it to happen, and that life in the universe should be pretty widespread. The organisms in the fossils probably wouldn't like life on Earth so much now, but it does show that life can form and thrive under conditions we would think of as unlivable. Mm -hmm.